today I'm going to be setting up this electric generator. This is a 3500 watt Smarter Tools generator. It's actually 10 years old, brand new in the box, never been started. So let's open it up and I'll show you the process of getting it going. I have it unboxed and I put it on this dolly here just to raise it up a bit and make it a little bit easier to work on. I'm going to add the oil. This model takes a half quart of oil and let me show you where that's added. Here I have it sort of tipped up on its side. I'm going to remove the dipstick here because I think this will make it just a little bit easier to fill it up. I've got a half quart of 10W30. We're going to put that in here. I have to cross these threads and I will lay it back down. And then we're going to check the dipstick here. See that we have the right amount of oil. I don't think you have to turn it on its side like I did, but I just figured it would be a little bit easier to pour it in that way. So actually, when you're checking the oil, you don't screw it in, you just put it tight. And we can see the level of oil there. All right, I've got the oil added. Let's get some fuel in here. It has a screen here just to make sure no particles get in here. I've got some fresh fuel. I'm not going to add too much because this is sort of just a trial run. Ten years ago, we had a power outage that lasted five days, and it was a miserable experience. Of course, at that time, there were no generators left in the store, so I bought this, and luckily I haven't needed it. But I figured it's time, with it being spring and the rainy season, to get this ready, just in case. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on here. And then the choke is right here. We're also going to turn the fuel on. And there's a diagram here for on and off. Now it says to give it a few slow pulls, very slow, just to get the fuel going a little bit before we give it some real pulls. All right, all right, let's give it a try. It started on the first pull and it was actually quite easy to pull. So. You notice me adjusting the choke after it started up. You're gonna to want to put that to the run position. And every engine is different. 
the position you want to ultimately put it at is the position in which you no longer hear that chugging sound. Once the engine is running smoothly, that's where you want to keep the choke. And some engines that may be all the way in the no choke position and other ones you're going to adjust it a little bit but once it sounds like it's running smoothly that's where you'll keep it when checking out the control panel you have a voltage meter you have fuses you have dc power you have your standard home electrical outlets you also have a emergency shutoff if the oil were to become low that's something you definitely want to keep an eye on and check the oil with the dipstick every so often if you're running this for any extended period of time so i thought i would go ahead and plug something in and try these outlets i'm just gonna plug a fan in and make sure that it is operational and powering something. I'm gonna try out both of these outlets and just test them out. Now, anytime you would shut off the generator, you would first want to turn off and unplug anything that the generator is in fact powering. And there's a gauge on the top of the unit as well to indicate the fuel level. Here I have an extension cord that I would use to power things in my home. You wanna keep the unit far enough away from your house so that it's not near any open windows or doors so that you don't have to worry about carbon monoxide infiltrating your home. This would give you multiple outlets to plug in. Just don't overpower the unit. Follow the guidelines in the manual of how much ampage you can run at a given time. So as you see, the setup process on this is pretty simple. Really, it's just adding the engine oil, turning on the power, filling up with fuel, choking it, and starting it. And this started on the first pull. So a few safety reminders, really. Um, you never operate this inside, even in your garage, because the fumes within your garage can easily penetrate into your house. I was just testing this and running it for five minutes right at the edge of my door. So that was fine, but you want to operate this outside. And for safety, I would say you want to probably chain this to an immobile object because if there's a outage, someone could very easily come along in the night if you're running this and steal it. So. I would say also make sure that you keep a few bottles, a uh, few quarts of extra engine oil, as well as a five gallon container of extra fuel. Because remember, in the event of an outage, the nearby gasoline stores will not be operating. The pumps require electricity. So keep that on hand and keep some oil on hand because after every 100 hours of operation, you're going to need to change the oil. And you're also going to need to remember to check that oil regularly. This particular model has a low engine oil alarm, but you don't want to depend on that. You always want to check that with the dipstick. I would say always shut off the fuel supply when you're turning it off and let it die from the uh, fuel source. That way you're running out the fuel that's still in the line because the, the fuel nowadays contains ethanol and that is bad for storage long-term. Spring and summer in Chicagoland is generally when we get our really bad storms and that is almost always accompanied with extreme heat and extreme humidity. So being able to run the refrigerator freezer periodically, keeping that cold, and also a fan, or I have a small portable window air conditioner that I keep stored away. I have central air, but in the event of a long-term outage with 100 degree temperatures, it would be very nice to be able to run that um, to keep cool a little bit as well. And of course, you don't have to run everything all at once. You can cycle between the refrigerator for a few hours and say the air conditioner. There's a chart in the manual that tells you 
how many watts this can utilize and how to calculate that. So if you haven't subscribed yet, it's not too late. If you have, welcome to the family. I love you for watching.